Praise be to Allah, Lord of the worlds. And peace and blessing be upon his last messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his companions and those who follow the right path. Dear viewers, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you and the mercy of Allah and his grace. Welcome again to Ramadan season of understanding Islam. Dear beloved viewers, we received a selection of questions regarding all aspects of Psalm and Ramadan and wish to take a few episodes to address them. This is our second round of questions. We hope you find the answers that you seek, inshallah. On to our first question. Do pregnant women and nursing mothers have to fast Ramadan, or is there any alternative, like giving food to the needy during Ramadan? Dear viewer, yes, pregnant women and nursing mothers have to fast Ramadan. However, it is permitted for them to break their fast if they need to for the benefit of themselves or the embryo or the infant. Yet, they have to make up for the days they didn't fast. For Allah says, but if any of you is ill or on a journey, the same number should be made up from other days. As Surah Al-Baqarah 2, verse 185. And as pregnancy causes hardship, just like sickness, and so can nursing, then they take the same rule as sickness. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, Allah has relieved the traveler of fasting and halved the prayer. And he has relieved the pregnant and the nursing mother of the duty of the fast. And Allah knows best. The other question, what is the injection of Sharia in kissing and hugging in the day of Ramadan? Dear viewer, fasting is a worship in which one has to abstain from any sexual relation. The time for intimate relations in Ramadan is at night after iftar. Kissing and such acts may very well lead to the intimate intercourse. If kissing and hugging agitate lust and sexual desire, they are prohibited. According to the Maliki scholars, if one does any of that and becomes aroused and loses control, he has to make up for that day and to give penance as well, because it leads to invalidating the worship, that is fasting. While the Shafi'i and Hanafi scholars state that he has to make up for the fasting without the penance. But in case the lust and sexual desire is not agitated, then those acts are not forbidden. However, they are disliked because they may lead to fast invalidation, and Allah knows best. The next question is, what is the injection of Sharia in putting on perfumes and incense while fasting? Perfume is disliked for the fasted person in the day of Ramadan because perfumes may agitate some intimate desires and agitate lust is prohibited. Smelling incense intentionally breaks fasting, according to the Maliki and Hanbali jurists, and one must make up for the fasting because the smoke of the incense is actually a substance that goes inside the body. However, if one does not intend to smell it or cannot avoid smelling it while, while walking or going around, there is no need to make up for the fast, and Allah knows best. The next question is, what is the view on vomiting by a fasting person? Dear viewer, vomiting does not break the fast unless if it is done deliberately. If one makes himself vomit, he has to make up his fast. At Tirmidhi narrated that the Prophet Sallallahu said, whoever is overcome by vomiting, then he is not required to make up for the fast. And whoever vomits on purpose, then he must make up for the fast. And Allah knows best. Dear viewers, we hope you are enjoying and benefiting from Ramadan, inshallah. More questions and answers after this short break. Stay with us. Welcome back to Understanding Islam Ramadan. We are continuing to answer questions on the way to get the best out of this blessed time of the year. The next question is, what is the injunction of Sharia in a person who used to not fast Ramadan intentionally without an excuse? Dear viewer, according to all scholars, whoever didn't fast intentionally in Ramadan without an excuse, he cannot make up for the fasting even if he fasts the rest of his life. 
That is, he will not get the rewards of fasting Ramadan even if he fasts a whole year. He has to repent to Allah the Almighty and ask for his forgiveness. And he has to make up for the days he didn't fast. Concerning the penance, the Shafi'i and Hanbali jurists see that there is no penance on him. In contrary to the Hanafi and Maliki jurists who see there is a penance as well. And Allah knows best. The next question is, what is the dua of iftar? Dear viewer, Umar ibn al-Khattab narrated that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, used to say when breaking the fast, Thirst is gone or has been quenched. The veins are moistened or have been satiated and the reward is certain if Allah wills. And Mu'adh bin Zuhra radiallahu anh, also narrated that it was reported to him that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say while breaking the fast, Allahumma laka sumt wa ala rizqika aftart. O oh God, I fasted for your sake and I am breaking my fast from the sustenance you blessed me with. So after breaking the fast, either of these two dua or supplication can be said and Allah knows best. The next question is, can we give the value of Zakat al-Fitr in money instead of giving it as food? Basically, Zakat al-Fitr is given from the types of food mentioned in the hadith, such as dates, wheat, barley, and grain. This is according to the majority of jurists. But the Hanafi jurists permit paying its value in money if it is better for the poor to do so. So a Muslim can choose any of the two views to give Zakat al-Fitr, inshallah, and Allah knows best. The next question is, what is the injunction of Sharia in using a toothbrush and toothpaste while fasting? Using a toothbrush only or with toothpaste is permissible if none of the toothpaste will go inside the body. If some of the toothpaste does go inside the body, the fast is invalidated. Hence, it is better not to use the toothpaste in the days of Ramadan and use the siwak, which is a sunnah of the Messenger وسلم, at all times, whether a person is fasting or not, according to the majority of jurists, and Allah knows best. Dear viewers, I hope that you found these answers enlightening and that they will help you to fully embrace and use this holiest of months. We pray to Allah the Most Generous to help us learn and practice our religion correctly and grant us success in this great month and make us good for ourselves and everyone around us. Amin. See you tomorrow, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you and the mercy of Allah and His grace.